Hey guys, this is Sense here in Dubspot, New York City. I wanted to take a minute and talk about Ableton Live 9.5 and more specifically, how you can use it to chop and slice samples and have the timing get preserved throughout the process. I'm a big fan of chopping in hip hop um, and something that I've noticed in a lot of sampling nowadays is people are deferring to looping their samples, where when I came up, it was kind of more about chopping things up and making it sound obscure. You didn't really want anybody to be able to identify what you were sampling. The warping features in Ableton Live 9.5 did a really good job at taking advantage of that concept. You can take advantage of the same slicing and warping features that you would see in arrangement view, but now drop those on to any samples that you have on a pad. So when you change tempo or pitch, everything gets preserved. So we have a soul sample loaded up into a clip and session view in Ableton. Uh, this is a Lonnie Liston Smith sample. If you're a hip hop fan, you might be familiar with it. I'll just play a little bit of the intro. And as this track is playing, I'm gonna start dropping down warp markers at the different parts that I wanna keep later on in these pads. And I'll actually take off this quantization from one bar to none so we can move around quickly. Okay, and in order to warp this, I'm gonna make this our first start point. So I'm gonna set 1.11 here. And this will allow us to take advantage of those time stretching capabilities that were added in 9.5. So I want this to be on that second bar. This will be on that third. This will be on that fourth. And I'm basically just matching the downbeats. And you can always click up here if you need to bring that playhead back and preview. So that should be enough to play with. So you can kind of dictate how many slices you want. We'll keep this simple for, for this example. Once you've selected a bunch of pieces, um, and I'll include this preset in uh, the downloads on our blog, so just hit blog.dubspot.com to grab the download for this. Uh, but you can basically right click and use the slice to new MIDI track feature. And I have a preset that takes advantage of uh, the warped timing option that's in 9.5. I'll share with you all so you can download it. And this will take all of these little points and put them onto the Ableton push pads so we can trigger them off and make a new melody out of them. One of the things that you want to take advantage of are the macro settings. So to make this emulate an MPC style of chopping up samples, I've used a couple of the macros to put the more familiar characteristics at your fingertips. Um, furthermore, we're going to use some of the filtering options to get that lo-fi tone too. So, if you hit the device section with any of these pads loaded up, you get eight macros that include the pitch, uh, the filter cutoff, turning the filter on and off, the filter type, and then the four envelope settings for designing the volume of the sample. So, first off, each pad has those sounds that we chopped. And if you notice, we have that complex warp mode on, so if I change the tempo, this will... So we'll drop down and match that tempo that we have. And that's why it's important to get everything gridded on uh, the right downbeat. So when you're warping, those tempos match too. I'm gonna bring that back up to 92. And I mentioned macros before. One of the big macros that I like to play with when I'm chopping up a sample is pitch. I'm from the old school of chopping hip hop samples. I don't like things to be that recognizable when I use them. So taking things out of their natural pitch is one of the quickest ways to do that. Um, I tend to pitch down, gives you a little bit more tone. So we'll just start to improvise that a little bit. something we can work with. So I'm going to mute that initial sample channel, get rid of this initial clip. We'll start the metronome running and kind of jam over that.
metronome. Now we can start adding in some drum sounds and we'll flesh this idea out. a little bit more of a lo-fi and retro tone on that sample, I want to take advantage of some of the new filters that you'll find in Simpler and also in the auto filter in Ableton Live 9.5. So let's go over to that sample track. We'll solo this a little bit so we can really hear what we're doing. And currently the sampler is using the clean setting which is the default EQ that you get in EQ8 with Ableton. Um, there are some new curves. One of my favorites is this MS2 curve, which kind of emulates the MS20 filter. I'm going to enable that on this slice, and then I'm going to right-click this and copy that value to siblings, so all of the samples get that same filter setting. All right, I'll also add some drive, and then we'll turn that filter on and start to carve some of the lo-fi out. that value to siblings, same for the drive, come down in our gain obviously because I got a lot louder. And now that has a nice dirty tone to go with the sample. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was really the, the advent of warping and how that effects when you change the tempo in Ableton. This sample is currently being chopped and looped at 92 BPMs. If we did this on an MPC or an ASR-10 like back in the day, and I wanted to go into a different tempo, it would involve a lot of really tricky time stretching techniques. But since we dropped those, uh, those warp markers ahead of time and then chopped things and preserved the warping, I can go up in tempo in this and preserve that same tone without getting any weird artifacts. So if I drop this or raise this up to 128, for example, You can get the same kind of tones, which is really great for remixing, for live edits, or if you're trying to improvise and change time in the middle of a track. So if you're a fan of sampling, I can recommend Ableton Live 9.5 enough. That warping feature has kind of been the gem we've all been looking for for years. Um, and for more information on Ableton Live, visit dubspot.com and take a look at our Ableton Live producer program available in New York City, LA, and through Dubspot Online. Until next time, take care.